So we have practically beaten to death who is the Christ. A lot of people have a lot of opinions. If you just go back to Scripture and do what I did, you don't need half of those passages we looked at, but this just shows you how thorough God's Word is describing what is the definition of the Christ. The, capital letter, the, the definite article, Christ, the unique one, and we have descriptions of them all over the place. So in E, 1 John 5, 1b, whoever of those that believe that Jesus is the Christ, i.e. children of God, born of God, for the while that they are expressing agape, godly love, for God, their Father, they must also be expressing agape, godly love for those whom the Father has given birth to. Otherwise, it isn't either for fellow children of God, born of God, or there is no agape love being expressed at all, in the sense that one goes hand in hand with the other. If you think you're loving God, and you're not expressing love for the brethren, you're not loving God either, or vice versa. So scripture will tell you who God is and your obligation to the brethren. You don't have to like them. You don't have to have an emotional attachment to them, but you have to express self-sacrificial agape love toward them when given the opportunity. And you have to increase the, the capacity for you to have the opportunity by diligently studying God's word, showing yourself approved, and then God will give you more opportunities to do things perhaps that you don't particularly care to do, except that you care agape love for God, so loved the world that he gave his one only son. He didn't particularly uh, love uh, emotional attachment to the whole world. The agape self-sacrificial loved them, but some people are quite evil. Most of us are, and God doesn't have an emotional attachment to us out of that recourse, but out of the fact that we are his children in his image, and we become his children in the personal family of God by faith alone because he died for our sins. So, just as God expressed agape love toward all of humanity, so we are to do it for the brethren in Christ at the very least. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're not expressing love for God at all. If a father uh, tells a, a child to love his sister, but doesn't, and out of rebellion, does he actually love the father? No. So we look at Whoever loves, whoever is the one who is loving the father, the one who gave birth to him, also loves the child, the one having been born of him. So if you're actually loving the father, you're loving the children. If not, it's neither. So whoever are those that have believed that Jesus is the Christ, the children of God, born of God, those who are now born of God, for the while that they express agape godly love for the father, their father that presumes for the one who gave birth to them, must, he must also be expressing agape godly love for the children born of him fellow children of God, born of God, in the sense that the one goes hand in hand with the other. <clears throat> the issue is not how likable a child of God, born of God, is to another that would engender affection and friendship. If they're not your friend, but you still express a godly love toward them, self-sacrificially, self sometimes uh, you're almost being punished by opening up yourself to being a, a godly spiritual help to another who isn't so uh, open to it. But because they are fellow children of God, born of God, they are a child of the one who gave birth to them. By that alone are they to be agape loved by all who are born of God. And most of the time I'm devastated by the way Christians treat me when I start to be uh, agape, uh, self-sacrificial toward them. Compare 1 John 4, 21. And this commandment we have from him, the one who loves God should love his brother also. So he should. Author states in 1 John 4, 21, the commanding children of God, born of God, that if they love God, they should love one another also, all part of the same command which is sourced in God and is from Him. So if you don't have anything from Him to offer to a fellow brethren, you're barely a child of God at all, except by faith alone. To do one is to do the other. Note that John stipulates that this command is from Him, meaning God, Jesus Christ. Compare 1 John 2, 10. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. So the focus is on actually fellow brethren are brought there to you for you are growing in the faith with one another. You can't ignore them because God is giving you an opportunity to be with them and minister to them as they to you. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. That's the verse. 1 John 3.11 and the other verses here. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Wow. 
And this we have known, the love of the Son of God, because he for us, his life did lay down. And we ought for the brethren our lives to lay down. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? That doesn't mean you're not born of God. You've got a work in progress. And this is his commandment, that we may believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. We're commanded to do that, which means we have a choice. Sad to say, unless you grow in the faith, study the word, and self, do self-sacrificial things, uh, you're not going to grow in the faith very much. 1 John 5, 2. By this children of God, born of God, apostles included, know that they love one another with an agape godly love, when while they express agape godly love toward God, and when while they observe, do his commandments. Likewise, children of God, born of God, cannot express agape godly love toward God, without also expressing agape love toward one another and without also obeying his commandments. They all go hand in hand. Without doing the one, they are not doing the others. So since God has commanded children of God, born of God, to love one another, one cannot say that one loves God when while one does not obey God's commandments for expressing agape godly love toward one another is one of God's commandments. It's a mouthful. Work on it. The best way to do it is keep focusing on God's Word, studying, taking notes, and absorbing this, and maybe your knee-jerk reaction to be godly agape love and not uh, distaste because the other person is not attractive to you, not friendly to you, uh, not doing anything for you, or doing something that's maybe a little bit distasteful. But you overlook that because you, they're children of God nevertheless. So, by this children of God, born of God, apostles included, note that they love one another with agape, godly love, when while they express a godly love toward God and while and when they observe his commandments. Likewise, children of God, born of God, cannot express godly agape love toward God without also expressing God agape love toward one another without the also obeying commandments. They go hand in hand. 1 John chapter 2. Five, and whoever may keep his word, truly in him the love of God has been perfected and made complete. And this we know that in him we are. So you may be in him, in position, but you don't, from a temporal experience, day-by-day -day knowledge, know that you're in him. Uh, you have a confidence because of what the word of God s says, but then if you acted disobediently towards God, not reaching out to f uh, fellow believers, and trying to be faithful and self-sacrificial expression of God they love toward them, then you really don't truly uh, know in him who you are in that moment. The Greek phrase rendered, and whoever may keep his word in 1 John 2, 5, results in knowing God beyond one's experience of salvation unto eternal life, as in the temporal life. Since the Greek word rendered, rendered terete means to keep in the sense of carefully guarding and observing, then this phrase has in view one who carefully guards and observes, observes God's commandments for a period of time, resulting in one being declared as follows. Truly in him, the love of God has been perfected, but only for those moments. In view is the love of God is demonstrated in children of God, born of God, when, while they are keeping God's word. The Greek word agape, rendered love in 1 John 2, 5, refers to the godly, self-sacrificial, benevolent love, cho love children of God, born of God, are and is commanded to express for one another. And this commandment is in Old Testament Scripture. I don't have to go too far. Leviticus 19.18 You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So in the Greek translation, the word love is agapeesis. This, this uh, word, this godly love, is characterized by an individual who is in God, who abides in him, who walks in the same manner as he, Jesus Christ, walked. That's a tall order. <clears throat> Largely failure. Confess and move on. Study God's word and absorb it and find out where you run astray. Children of God, born of God, who have been perfected in God's godly agape love, has, have been made complete in their mortal lives. Mortal life effective for those moments that they are walking in the light of life, God's absolute righteousness, including confession, 1 John 1 9, and in keeping God's word. This is a message about children of God, born of God, when while they learn and obey God's commandments while when they study and obey the word of God wherein those commandments are contained. You can't obey in a vacuum, so you have to study and put something in your mind. And usually you're replacing with something you had before, which is ungodly. 
<clears throat> the subject of knowing God beyond one's experience of salvation unto eternal life, the subject of the last two verses, 1 John 2, 3 to 4, continues in verse 5, those who are children of God, born of God, when while they are faithful, when while they keep the word of God, have been perfected in the sense of have been made complete, matured. Teleos. Perfect. The word perfect is, does not refer to sinless perfection, but matured. Personal perfection already possessed by each believer in Christ by status because you believe. Relative perfection, spiritual maturity. And ultimate perfection when you're raised from the dead into absolute perfect perfection and there's something to look forward to in your temporal life. Now, your eternal life, you'll be able to do it. But that's built in. So when while they keep God's word, they are in harmony with the absolute righteousness of God. With God himself and his son, Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, through walking in the light of God's absolute righteousness, walking in the light, recognizing his perfection by studying his word, including confession and obedience. And when you confess and you make an attempt to obey, your confession purifies you from all unrighteousness. And for those moments when the disciple has been perfected or made complete, the verse goes on to declare, in this we know that in him we are, in this temporal moment-to-moment -moment experience. You can know it in your temporal and your, uh, your, the moment that you believe that you're in that position, an eternal position, and see, uh, sealed to it by the indwelling Holy Spirit, but act like, like it moment to moment. So in the sense of abiding in Him, having an intimate relationship, fellowship with God, having a greater knowledge of God through study and of His Son, Jesus Christ, than when we first believed in Jesus Christ for eternal life. So if you've progressed and gone on toward spiritual maturity, all by the grace of God, but no one can claim to be lived perfect perfect lives and moments without sin, 1 John 1, 8 and 10, and 2, 1, and 2, 1. Despite remaining in mankind's fallen condition with their sin natures, children of God, born of God, may walk in fellowship with God by walking in, not according to the light of God's absolute righteousness, not according to it in sinless perfection, but in the sense of acknowledging that God is perfect light, absolute righteousness. And you recognize that in your reading, memorizing scripture, you realize how perfect he is, in certain circumstances, you realize he went one way and you should have gone that way. You didn't. 1 John 1, 5-7, and acknowledging your sinful shortcomings before holy God, which is 1 John 1, 8-10. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us these sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So while we are walking in the light, not according to, we're making attempts, we're walking in, recognizing his absolute righteousness, walking in that light, and are expressing a copy of godly love for others, we can know by a trusting in what Scripture says that we have temporal fellowship with God and one with one another who are walking in that light. Furthermore, Scripture says that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us, each one of us, from the temporal sin that we are acknowledging and from all unrighteousness. So be aware of your sin by studying Scripture, confess and move on, and by God's grace you're redirected towards a godly life. So children of God, born of God, can know what is of God and what is not relative to what they observe others say and do while they walk in God's light and are expressing agape, godly love for others. But it is limited by their not having God's absolute knowledge of the other's eternal and temporal position with him and the other's understanding, motivations, and faith. And it is limited by what they accurately know of what Scripture teaches on the matter at hand. So we have to continually study and review and it is conditioned upon the accuracy of what they think that another is saying and doing. Better to limit one's conclusions about another to what one can prove out from Scripture on the matter at hand, or remain silent on the matter, praying for the other rather than to subject them to false teaching or undue condemnation. Let's be, be careful when you're saying something that you're literally quoting Scripture or paraphrasing it very accurately. So, moving on into John 1, 5, 3a. Children of God, born of God, know that they are expressing agape godly love for one another when while they are expressing agape godly love toward God and are observing and doing his commands. It takes a lot. Uh, most of the time we do it uh, inexplicably, and, and as we grow in the faith, we should be growing in the knowledge of the body of Christ by careful and detailed study. So in 1 John 5, 1b, it states that whoever of those that believe that Jesus is the Christ, children of God, are born of God. For whether they grow in the faith or not, 
for the while that they express agape godly love for God their Father, they must also be expressing agape godly love for those whom the Father has given birth to.